Welcome to this review on 6268 LEGO Renegade Runner from 1993. This set is 25 years old and an amazing collector's model. I'll show you exactly what you're getting in the set, all the features, availability, and what to expect if you want to buy this set. Time codes for all of these different talking amounts are in the description. This isn't a set I recommend letting little kids around, and if you're a collector, then letting your children play with. Oi! No. The first thing that I'd like to talk about is the main build of it, and specifically how simple most of it is. It's this incredible blend of very large pieces that should be easy to put together, and incredibly difficult pieces. To give you a sense of what I mean, to start off, the main bulk of the set, which is the lower part of it, is very simple. It's two huge, large pieces that connect at the middle here, and go on top of a large grey bottom boat piece, which has some texture to show that it's wooden planks. And then on top of that, a lot of smaller pieces, which you'd find in maybe a LEGO City set nowadays, which go around the edges of the ship to give it some nice railing, and then towards the back, a little bit more detail, which of course was not as common for sets in this time. Going back around the other side, inside of the ship, you have a cannon, which uses a similar cannon to what is seen in sets today. A very basic cannon where you can pull in the back and shoot out a couple of barrels that are here and there around the ship. I think I've put them down there and here. You might have noticed that there's a treasure chest on the bottom there. If you open that up, it has just a few gold coin pieces, tens and twenties and thirties. These are no longer in production and these chrome gold pieces are just incredible. Going back around the ship, you can see that the front has a lot of much more difficult building. So this front area actually has some, not only the wire tubing, but then also a lot of these older style of joints. You can see right there it has a sort of locked in kind of look that looks like gears up there. This is used a few places. It's used there, it's also used here as well as here, and it's interesting because e even they use it over here, but nowadays they've changed to basic peg connections that work with minifigure hands and uh, basic claws and everything, but it's just different, you know, all of these older ones. This is a long piece that goes all the way up to the top, as you can see here, goes all the way around to the front, one long rod with just a single one over here. It's, it's similar to the one that's used for the main mast of the ship. Besides that, uh, this is all one piece, and it's mainly a very simple building, but as it gets higher, it gets more difficult. Up here, there's a round turntable piece with that same older style peg connection, and it goes all the way across, as well as some um, pieces at the end which you can plug into the flag, similar to how they are done today. And at the top, uh, one of these headlight bricks is just used to put the string through, which I'll talk about later. The pirate flags here at the top and the larger one at the end are prints. And that's basically the only print in the set except for the minifigs themselves, which we'll go into later. Now a quick topic I want to touch upon is the masts and sailing. This method of tying on the sails using string is very outdated and nowadays it's all using proper masts with these ball bearing connections all the way across the ship. These old string masts just give it such a more realistic feel, it makes it look like it's an actual model ship that you're getting. It ties up to the front here at the regular style peg connection. It goes up, around to the edges, up through this headlight brick that I mentioned earlier, and ties up over there. It shows you in the instructions specifically how to tie it up. The main flags themselves, this one, is th threaded through this top hole here, but otherwise it's only attached using the string which you wound within all of them. This set is extremely hard to tie all the string onto. A quick look around the ship shows off some of its most expensive and outdated pieces. This at the front, at the back here, is, disconnect is discontinued now because it's much easier to build it up using smaller, cheaper pieces. This main string has been used last in LEGO Kingdoms back in 2012. The sails themselves, of course, have not been used. The large pieces at the bottom that make up the rudder, the, bl the brown bottom of it, and then the large one that's the main deck, are all discontinued. The cannon holder 
has, is no longer available, as well as the coins within the chest. The most interesting piece to me on the set is the working compass, which actually turns and works in real time. This piece is probably one of the rarest on here. Going back to the front, this little dragon on the end is also discontinued, and also the second rarest piece on here. Overall, if something was to be missing in the set, it would not be easy to replace. So definitely, if you have the set complete, be very careful. One of the last things I want to show you are the minifigs, which, while are simple, are actually quite advanced for its time. These two have alternating colors, yet are the same two people. The weapons are all still in production. As you can see, they have this basic mustache with some stubble, and just a little bit of hair printed underneath the mat, these bandanas. Then the main two have the captain, who has a really nice detailed map of it, the seas, and a basic chest. None of them have back printing, by the way, because that wasn't around at this time. His shirt with the tattered robe looks amazing, the knife across it. The print for the head is probably the most intricate of all of it, with a lot of hair around it. Intricate stubble shows the sides here, and a little bit of a line in between the middle of the beard, as well as an eye patch. The first mate also has an eye patch as well, some stubble and the same hair printed towards the top of it. This tricorn hat has been used last in Pirates of the Caribbean. The torso is a nice looking imperial torso and looks a little bit more fancy than the other ones. He also, to note, uses the older style of grey, the, not the light bluish grey, but the, um, the bluish grey. The pirate ship instruction manual is quite different compared to the older ones. First off, it's just one single book that's printed this side down to build the ship. The first page, as usual, shows the minifigs and a basic tutorial of how to use them. Going down, it shows pretty basic Lego building. This, The only difference is it doesn't show you the pieces and the quantity of them. It just shows you how to build each section and then how to put it on. But some of these are still used today, the way that they use boxes to show. Like this method of using lines, numbers, and then smaller pink boxes to show more intricate steps. It's all done before. This is a good example of the way it shows you to tie the string. On some of the more recent Kingdom sets, it doesn't tell you how to tie it on. You, they just assume that you know. But this knot shows you a very intricate and detailed way on how to tie on the string. It shows to tie it on and do a loop around it and very intricately how to tie it up together. It has no advertisements on the back except for just a nice, beautiful photo of the set. Take my new ship bag to sail. Nah, laddie, that's not a ship. But I tell you what, matey, that's a ship. Altogether, this is an amazing set. One of my favourite LEGO pirate ships in this time. Especially in its scale and size. A good price guide is, if you want to get this brand new in box, it would be somewhere in the $500 to $1,000 range. Very hard to get. And opened, you can get it somewhere between 150 to 200. And that's about all I have to tell you about the set. It is a remarkable set, real piece of history here from LEGO. And I hope that you will try and look out for these old pirate ships, try and remember the history behind the LEGO group. This is LEGO Wizard. Have a nice day.